All right, so <clears throat> here is a 3D printed arcade that I just finally finished, with the exception of maybe a little bit of wiring, kind of fixing rat nest stuff, and that's about it. Um, so this is all 3D printed, with the exception, of course, of the buttons and the screen and all that, and electronics, but the whole body of this thing is 3D printed. I 3D printed the dust cover there. And uh, the back is 3D printed, and inside of it is housing a Raspberry Pi 4. Um, it is portable, so I have a battery bank back here that's kind of attached with Velcro, and it support it supports uh, it's a 10,000 milliamp supports uh, uh, pass through uh, USB um, char pass through charging, and I have a lit marquee with a uh, with a remote attached to the side, so it changes color and all that fun stuff. The panel is 4x3. Um, it's one that I found on Amazon. Um, this whole design was made for some different, um, like a different screen. And uh, there's a USB port and audio on the back, so you can plug in headphones. Um, it was designed for a different one, but that one wasn't available, so I bought a different one and modified the back to fit it. Uh, the whole thing is mostly glued together uh, using Weldon 13, I believe it's called. A uh, bit of a messy glue, but it works very well. And some of it, there's a little bit of uh, super glue involved here with like the logo here, which I printed out. So I thought this would fit nicely, the Sega logo. And I kind of crazy glued that on with a little dab of crazy glue. It's just clean. It's easier to use. But it didn't work well for the, the bigger parts. So there's that. And uh, let me show because I can't. Uh, let me lift it up. Um, and see. It, it's not very. It's a very small arcade machine. Um, glue holds well. As you can see, I can pick it up and it doesn't fall apart. It's printed in parts on uh, an Ender 3, upgraded Ender 3 with a with a CR Touch and all that. So the sides are are three three different pieces. Um, move around to the back. There's some things, there's some cutouts for some things that I don't need. So I didn't include them, but here's the back. Uh, there's a spot for a fan. In, I have a case that has a fan inside of it, and it's right over here where the ventilation is, so... Um, not really using that, but this is the power, power bank. It's just, uh, something I found on Amazon. I used it for my Oculus Quest and liked it a lot. It's a 10,000 milliamp per hour battery bank that supports pass-through charging, has, you know, USB-A, USB-C, um, it's, uh, three amps out, um, has a button. This is the one of the big things. It has a button so I can turn things on and off. So I had to plug these in separate. This is the monitor and this is the Pi. If I plug the monitor into the Pi, it undervolts and won't work right. So I, I took the, uh, the... The monitor supports uh, being powered by a power bank with a USB. So I took USB out from the monitor, plugged it in here... And then this is from the Pi 4. Uh, this would not work with the Pi 3. I, I had the Pi 3, and I tried that, and it was undervolting no matter what I did. So it only worked with the Pi 4. And so I went with this battery bank and the Pi 4, which is good because I can play Dreamcast games and all that on here. And now we're going to move it around. And uh, we have our our remote for the for the uh, marquee and uh, yep I had this uh, joystick here it's just a, all the buttons and joysticks are fairly cheap kind of stuff I didn't go overboard with that um, the way they have this mounted I wasn't a big fan because this goes on top I, they assume that you're going to put artwork over it in the design because they give you they supply you with some artwork to put on it but I wanted to do my own thing, so I decided to go with uh, different color, um, different color filaments that I had. Uh, the one I used for the blue is called Amalen Blue Green, I believe, which is like a silk filament that 
fades from like a uh, light blue to like a, a kind of a greenish type thing. So there's slight variances in the uh, in the color, and uh, it's silk, so that it's a little shiny. And then the white is just a white. It's just uh, what is it? Hatchbox white filament. So that was that. Um, had I not had a, a auto bed leveling system, I could have never done this. <laughs> I couldn't print anything bigger than this statue <laughs> previously. But once I got the auto bed leveling system, I got to say I, it is really a it has helped a lot. The only thing I will say is that uh, because my bed is a little warped when I print parts, the parts. Because the, the auto bed leveling system is following the contour of the bed, it makes the parts just slightly warped when you print them. So you kind of have to flex them into place a little. But, yeah. They do... It did come out uh, the way I wanted. And now we're going to turn this thing on with the battery bank. Which I just got this today. The battery bank. Um, I did have to set the the uh you have to set the screen up to your liking before you put this this bezel on but i didn't glue this in this is actually i can remove that if i need to change something it's a pain in the ass but i got i can remove it um and i'm hoping i can get it so the screen doesn't look washed out um okay so this is just a simple Botocera image that I threw together really quickly with arcade games and arcade style games on it. Let me show you, uh, let me actually lower the volume for a second. That could kind of do, but I want to be able to see everything. So can we, oh, I can't just mute it. I'm just going to lower the volume. So, I don't get drowned out. Okay. So, let me just do, I'm going to grab this thing here, and we're going to go through some things. So, you can go change it to red, green, obviously it's like RGB, <laughs> blue, which is more purple, and then white. So you can just have it lit up white like that. Um, or you can have it, uh, you know, flicker through different colors. It's called flash. And then there's strobe. Like that. There's fade, which is the one I was using. And then there's smooth, which basically slowly changes into different colors. Doesn't seem very smooth to me, but that's that. And you can also adjust the brightness of the thing. It can be a little... I don't know. But yeah, you can adjust the brightness, turn it off, I think, maybe. Come on, turn off. Am I turning it? No, that's on. Yeah, you can turn it off by pressing the on bu power button on. Okay, so let's turn it back on. And I'm going to set it to fade again. You know. So, there's that. And I'm going to just reattach this to the side. Okay. And so this is actually a TFN panel. I don't know if I said that before. Um, let's see if I can... Went a little bit better just so I could get it to not blow out too much. Alright. So. I got uh, Beats of Rage on here. I got some Thomas Wave. So this works. You have Dolphin Blue. And that works fine. There is a bit of a glow on the screen. So even though it's the screen looks all right, but it's not perfect. 
Um, there are the viewing angles. Let me see if I can get the viewing angles here. Hey. Yeah, this is not... This piece here is very thin, so if you really push on it, like I just did, it will pop inwards. Um, but let me try to get viewing angles going, but... Actually, this... On this side, it's really good. It's, I think it's the other side where the viewing angles kind of suffer. So that's not too bad. Let's see if I can make it. Eh, it's a little dark. It's actually darker in real life than it is when I'm looking at it. And it's like you have to be on the side to, for it to kind of almost disappear. Let me see. You know. So anyways, it's not bad. It's just not perfect. Um, I do have a Arcade 1-Up uh, Mortal Kombat Countercade coming. Apparently that has an LCD display. So. But as you see, that's how the game actually performs, even though I'm not playing it. But, you know, it's a Raspberry Pi 4, so running Bottocera, or however we call it. So, that runs just fine. Okay, so just hit start and select, get out of it. And oh, and this piece here, I actually, uh, let me see if I can show on the camera this piece where around the uh the plate on the uh joystick i actually painted that white to match everything even though it's not my favorite solution that's how it's set up in this uh the way they set it up there's a notch for this to go into so i did the best i could there <laughs> um without using artwork and uh so yeah so it's uh all it is is just, uh, it's just Raspberry Pi 4 with a power bank, so it's portable. And because this supports, uh, pass-through charging, I can actually charge it, I can kind of get power from the wall. So I can plug it into a charger from the wall and play that way. So, yeah. So let's see, we got... PlayStation games, so I put some fighting games from the PlayStation on here. We got Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Ridge Racer, Battle Arena Toshin, and we got all the uh, Tekken games, uh, Rival Schools, all that. Got some PSP. I got to figure out the uh, the uh, analog stick and, and joystick controls because. They're not working right now, but um, they only work if I plug in an Xbox controller. Like I said, there's a USB port. I think I showed it. There's audio and a USB port in the back. And uh, Daphne. And a whole main ROM set. Includes Mortal Kombat, which I'm going to play. If I can find it. Up here, there it is. And it's just a theme that I downloaded from the theme manager thing. For whatever reason, Bato Sarah doesn't like Wi-Fi at this point in time. I I don't know if there's a fix for that, but I haven't looked yet. But I had to plug in through Ethernet. So this arcade machine also has a place to mount the Pi, but because the screws that were recommended had to be threaded through the board. I didn't want to do it that way. I actually attempted that one time and cracked the board. <laughs> so I chose to use a case and I snipped out the uh, I snipped out the mounts to make more room and then I just put a case in there with a fan. I got a uh, what's the word? I got a uh, A kit from Vilros. So, 
And all these games are working just fine off battery power, so no undervolting issues and all that, which was the issue I had with the Pi 3. Um, but like I said, works fine with this. And uh, that's about it. I think that's, that's the arcade machine, so I'm going to leave a link to the SDL files, just to show you I can turn it off with the button. Oh, I, I you gotta press it twice. Actually, let me actually show it. So, um, there's a button back here on the um, power bank, and you just hit it twice, and it turns everything off. And that's that. So, it was a cheap power bank, all that fun stuff, but... That's how that goes. And that's that. Um, so I'll leave a link to the SDL files and the, uh, I guess the screen because the screen that the person, original person who posted this uh, arcade machine, he, uh, the screen is actually no longer being made. And it's also in another country if you're not from the US. I think it's from Spain. So you have to have it imported. I don't know. But the one I, ha I have seems to work. I did have to use uh, uh, the overscan option. But it works. It fits. Or you can use any screen. Really should be able to fit in any screen. You might have to fiddle with it a little. But you should be able to use any kind of, um, of those uh, screens that you plug into the, um, the pins on the motherboard. Of the Pi. Yeah, you can use one of those. They norm. I don't know how the Pi 4 display is for that, but I just remember the Pi 3 had bad uh, display through the uh, pins. And why can't I remember the name of them? Anyway, so yeah, I'm just going to leave a link to the screen. And uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that. Uh, I think that's really all. I mean, you can use any LED strip, just a USB LED strip, which I have power up uh, plugged into the Pi for power. That works fine. And uh, I'll link to the power bank so that you can, if you want that, you can have it. And uh, I don't know if I mentioned that uh, this, maybe I'll link to this. This is just a Sega logo that I found. On Thingiverse, I printed that out and just glued it here with uh, crazy glue. And I think that's really all. Uh, it's just uh, 30, is it 30 millimeter buttons uh, and 20 millimeter buttons for the front. And it's just some random Sanwa, uh, crappy Sanwa clone that I have that I think I pulled from a Pandora's box to upgrade. But other than that, there's really all that's going on here. But uh, I don't know if I told myself when I was a kid that I could just print an arcade machine. Uh, I think I would have thought I was lying. <laughs> but here it is. So thank you for watching.